Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time visiting me. Today I have a really special walkthrough for you guys. I purchased this deck for the sole purpose of sharing it with you, you guys. I have not yet determined if this is a deck that I plan to keep or not, but it was one that I really feel like there's a lot of you that might really appreciate this deck and I wanted to share it with you and see what you thought. So I, this is, this is something I want to try to do a little bit more on the channel is pick things up, even if I'm not entirely sure that they will work for me for the sole purpose of sharing them with you. And then we'll see how it all pans out. This, we'll see how I feel by the end of it, because I am not going in with a lot of major expectations. I have other decks, by the way, we're talking about the fifth spirit tarot. I have other decks that I feel like sort of scratch the itch for decks like this in my collection. So I don't know that I need it, but gosh, it's, I think it's really cool. So we're going to go through it together. This is published by Hay House. It's by Charlie Claire Burgess. Burgess? I believe this was originally an independent deck and then Hay House picked it up, if I remember correctly. The uh, front cover illustration is by Charlie Claire Burgess, the box design by Nick C. Welch. Um, but this is the main creator of the deck. And let's see what it says. It says the tarot thrives in liminality and nuance. The more we work with tarot, the more we realize that everything is fluid, gender, meaning, even time. We're all creatures of earth, air, fire, and water bound together by the fifth element, spirit. This deck expands notions of gender through the juxtaposition of traditional titles and queered imagery. It encourages you to queer your practice by listening to your intuition, your personal symbolism, and your own lived wisdom. Now that's queer. I love that. I think that's super fun. So it's in a really nice two-piece box. Ooh. It says, may this deck guide you to your truth for where you find your truth, you'll find your power. Love that. And let's get this out of here. Now, I think I, if there was any plastic, I already took that off. It says, a queer and inclusive deck for a world beyond binaries. Cool. So here is the guidebook. We'll set that aside and take a look at it in a little bit. Ooh, I like the backs of these. I like the backs of these. So it's hands with the four tools of the suits. We have a blade, a pentacle, a cup, and a, uh, is that a lighter? That's super fun. Um, so that's the backings. They are reversible. And this is that Hay House matte cardstock. Now I will say I'm not a huge fan of the cardstock that Hay House has been using lately, but it is quite matte. Um, it does shuffle nicely. I've just found that my other Hay House decks I've bought recently have kind of warped a little bit with use. This has an ever so slight ever so slight curve to it already, um, but it's very, very, very minor and could just even be a trick of the light. So let's take a look. I love, one of the things that, that made me not so sure if this is a deck that I would wanna keep is because it does have sort of a muted, um, sort of a muted color palette. It's a little bit earthier in its tones, whereas I really tend to reach for decks like my This Might Hurt Tarot, which is a lot really vibrant color. Still, I feel like this is the kind of deck that a lot of you guys are gonna love. So right off the bat, I'm noticing two things. First of all, our Fool is awesome. I love how sort of modern and fresh it is. I love that there's like a little kitty cat um, sort of sticking out the backpack here, which is awesome. And one of the things that immediately jumps out at me about this is that this person has walked off the edge of the cliff already, but they're standing, their weight is on this standing leg, which is in the middle of the air. It's as if the universe is supporting them. And I think that's a really cool um, way to depict this card. I've also noticed down here in the bottom right, the um, sign for the planet Mercury, if I'm correct. So that's kind of cool. Love that. Or is that Neptune? It's Neptune, I think. I'm having a moment. Okay. And then here we have our magician card. Love this playing with chemicals, sort of making things happen. We have what look like rose petals and little bottles of oils, which I love and a, and a um, uh, mortar and pestle. And then we have on these individual bottles, we have symbols for the elements. So we have a symbol for the element water, one for earth. It looks like it could even be a salt jar. Um, one for the sword. It looks like it literally could be air, which is cool. And then one for fire here. So that's cool. They're doing magic. I love that they're actually doing like witchy magic here. That's cool. Here we have the high priestess and we have um, a crescent moon could be a little sickle here, which is super awesome. A bowl of water in the center, these pomegranates. I love that we've got the pillars and this central character here is holding a little box that could contain secrets. Amazing. I love the moon faces across the top. Oh no, is this one growing on me? Oh no. <laughs> this this may not, but this may be a fail. This may be like when you foster a dog and you end up keeping it. I haven't had that experience, but I would be the type. I would be the type. I'm like, I'm just gonna walk through this. I don't have to keep it, right? Like, um, but I'm getting attached already. Anyways, here's our Empress. Um, again, we have like sort of a, a sickle here for harvesting wheat. We have the broken open pomegranates, which I love, and our Empress here with the stars on their head. Love that. Wicked Emperor here. I love the cube. I love the measuring tape and the tools. I love how like 
um, structured this feels just looking at it. I like that we have a screwdriver here. That's amazing. Our Hierophant, some sort of spiritual teacher. We have our keys illustrated up here, but I love that they're in front of a bunch of books with a card index beside them. I think that's amazing. We have our lovers. The little symbol for Gemini is on the tattoo of this one. This looks more like self-love to me, which seems very intentional, and I think that's really, really cool. In fact, let's just see what the guidebook says because I can't wait. I want to know. I want to know what it says. The title of this card brings to mind romantic love, but the lovers is actually more about choice. Thank you. The choice to know yourself and love yourself entirely or to change yourself for the love of others. From birth, we feel pressure from family, peers, school, religion, and media, all pushing their values and standards upon us. In the midst of all that noise, it can be hard to distinguish the sound of your own authentic voice. It can be harder to follow, to then follow it, especially when it goes against the desires and expectations of others. But the lovers counsel you not to mold yourself to the standards of others because approval is not love. Instead, dare to be different, to divide, defy expectations, to disappoint. Embrace yourself in all your brilliance, brilliance and depth, all your virtues and vices. Look to your shadow and follow it into your self-discovery, for love is unconditional. If not, it is not love. This act of self-loving is also the first step to embodying your truth. Be brave enough to choose yourself. Oh my gosh! Holy moly. First of all, that aligns very closely with how I see the lover's card, um, the idea of choices and the kind of choices that affect us for a lifetime. But that write-up was really beautiful and I loved it. <laughs> okay, chariot. We have roller skates. I love it. I love that one of the roller skates is black, one is white, and this looks like a derby person and I love that so much. Um, the strength card. Love and trust. The collar is off. And I love that this is like a bully breed. I think that's amazing. I think it's the perfect thing here um, around just, you know, what you see isn't always what you get. And, you know, where you see what you think you might need to be afraid of, you might not. I think there's some really cool layers to that card. And I, I love that so much. The Hermit. Oh, I love this. I love this. The Wheel of Fortune. Justice. House of Law powerful. I think it's interesting how the house of law has all these cracks and crevices. It's kind of breaking apart. That's a powerful image. The hanged one submerged underwater, but this is like rope bondage, which is pretty specific here. It implies an intentionality rather than just like being like carelessly hanging. There's like thought and intention to that as if there's a journey being un undergone. I like that. This is really cool in the death card to see all these different generations and the butterfly. And we do have astrological symbology. I haven't been pointing it out on every card, but I think it's on every card. Yeah, here we have Neptune. Um, we have air. I'm looking for... Yeah, a lot of it's in tattoos. Like here's Libra there in the tattoos. So yeah, there's a lot of this happening. Temperance. Love, love, love. The devil. Interesting take on the devil for sure. The Tower. I love this star card. Oh, I really like this deck a lot. I think it might, I still think it might compete too much with my This Might Hurt. I can't decide. Uh, the Moon. I love this. I love how glowy it is. The Sun. Oh, I love that so much. Judgment. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. And The World really good. Okay, so here we have our Ace of Wands. So it is lighters. Love that. Oh, and oh, so it's not going to be like lighters throughout. That's cool. Here's our Two of Wands. So this feels slightly more pippish. Is it going to be throughout? I think a little bit. So it's a little bit less like people-y through these at least first few minors. But here we have a candle, a beeswax candle and a, a match that could be lit. I like the idea that this is still potential and possibility because of course the match isn't yet lit and the candle is not yet burning. So I like that this is still open. We don't yet know exactly how it's going to go. You know, I like that. This Three of Wands is perfect for me. It's like this embarking, we're lifting off, we're, we're beginning the journey. And the flames inside the uh, hot air balloons are sort of, um, it's like almost like a cutaway so you can see the inside there. I love that. Oh, I love the hearth and home feel of the Four of Wands here. The Five. Oh, we've got like torches and pitchforks going after a beehive. Interesting. Six of Wands. The seven. There's a lot to read into these pips. These are definitely not um, lazy pips or boring pips. These, there's a lot of thought behind these. The eight of wands. 
Ooh, the nine with the candles almost completely burnt out and the dawn just coming. And the ten of wands with this roaring fire. Ooh, page of wands, love that. Knight of wands, yes. Queen of wands, of course it's a queen, amazing. And the king of wands. I do really like the ambiguous gender through most of the deck. I think that's um, a really nice touch, especially for those of you who really want to have a deck that's got more ambiguous gender. It just really opens it up, I think, for the type of reading you might do or who you might read for. The Ace of Cups. The Two. Oh, I love this like sort of binding. There's a little ladybug on the rope there. Love that. The Three. I love the cookies and tea. Amazing. And you can also tell like everybody's got their own thing, right? Like there's lipstick on this mug and it's coffee, it looks like maybe. And this one's tea. Um, the different types of spoons. It really speaks to everybody having their own tastes, right? The Four of Cups. And the Five of Cups. The broken pop can, the broken bottle. But two of the cups are still good. The Six of Cups. All this stuff from childhood, right? The tooth in the jar with the money next to it for the tooth fairy. The soda can, the uh, fireflies in a bottle, um, the pot that's growing stuff. We have the um, sand from playing at the beach, the crumpled up. There's so much stuff, so many memories. The, each one of these could tell a story. I feel like there's actually, there's a lot in this deck that I think would be really good for anybody wanting a deck to use for like creative writing prompts or like fiction prompts. It feels like it's got, it's very imaginative and I think that's really awesome. Seven of cups, I love this too. Ugh. And the eight of cups. Nine of cups. 10 of cups, I love this. Again, all these different kinds of cups. There's some fish, a, a curly straw, a rainbow cup, um, a bottle that's been opened, a dog dish. So you really get the idea or the feeling of family of all these different characters that could be like a wine glass, a mug. Yeah, you, you feel like you can almost see the family without seeing the family. So you can insert whatever family in there that you want, which I think is really powerful about that card. Yay, I love that page of cups. And the knight. Okay, the queen, um, scrying bowl, tarot cards, a crystal, my kind of queen. That's legitimately Mr. Rogers, right? That's got to be. King of Cups, Mr. Rogers, I think that's amazing. And then we are into our swords. We have our ace, the two, love that. The three, I like how the, the heart is being sort of stitched up. The four, not as fond of this one but I'm not a big bug person though. The five, six, seven, eight, the cord cutting here is powerful, nine, the 10, that's a little tough. Uh, the page of swords, nose in a book, perfection. The Knight of Swords, yes, definitely. Moving, action without thinking, right? Or as much thinking anyways. Our Queen of Swords is pretty powerful looking here. And our King of Swords, love that. Definitely using our voice, right? Then we have the Ace of Pentacles. It's like a seedling, like uh, sprouting bulb. It's perfect for that. Our Two of Pentacles, we have those like little helicoptery things. Um, and a acorn, love that. The Three of Pentacles the building, four of pentacles, all the treasures being sort of buried underground, five of pentacles, the six, seven, eight, these tools of sort of refinement or mastery, the nine of pentacles, sort of the family table, and the 10, the sort of safe home, but it's not focused so much on the people, which I think is really expansive. Then we have the page of pentacles, who's holding that same um, sprout or sprouting bulb from the ace, or at least one similar. That's cool, I like that. I like that connection between the page and the ace. Our knight of pentacles, definitely a good range of ability and people types in this card, in this card deck. I don't know what I was going to say there. Um, the queen, I love that the queen is not traditionally uh, feminine appearance and we have the bunny there and the king. Love that. Okay. So let's see how this shuffles. We 
then we'll take a look at the guidebook. So I, I did read a sample entry already. So this is a matte cardstock and it shuffles nicely. It has enough give without being too much. But yeah, it does feel a little bit like that. It's hard to describe that Hay House. It just, I can tell, you can kind of see already actually the way in which the cards just sort of hold a bit of the bend or the pressure from shuffling. Hopefully you can kind of see what it's doing up here. That's what this Hay House cardstock does and I'm not fond of that. Um, so with that being the case, I think, and the fact that I know that I have other decks um, similar in my collection, at least ones that sort of fill this space for me, Mm, I think it's definitely not going to be one that I'm going to keep. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> the guidebook was really good, though. Um, so let's take a look at the guidebook, actually. So it's perfect bound. Fifth spirit is dedicated to the queers, the outsiders, the survivors, and everyone making magic from the margins. Love that. Making magic from the mar margins. What a beautiful way to put that. Um, and so we have here a note. The table of contents will have a note on gender and inclusivity, a bit about reversals, queering your tarot practice, tarot spreads, and then we have majors, minors, acknowledgements. Um, so let's take a look at spreads. Um, yeah, scrap the masculine feminine duality, don't assume, forget the shoulds, think beyond the binary. Love that. And then we have beyond binary spread, everyone's a little queer spread, a five spirits spread. So three unique spreads for this deck. And then when you get into the card by card, it's pretty basic. Like you don't get thumbnail images, which is fine. And then you get a write up that is as long as it happens to be. And then it goes on to the next one. So we don't get like, it, it can overlap pages. Looks like you get roughly a page for each one. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. As in here, we'll have the wheel of fortune clearly goes a little bit over and then justice and so on and so forth. In the minor arcana, it looks like it's about the same. So it's about the same amount of text on every write-up. So yeah, that is the Fifth Spirit Tarot. So here's what I'm gonna do. It's both going to help me avoid temptation and, and ensure that I continue to do this where I bring in decks that I wanna show you guys whether or not I plan to keep them. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to give this one away. So how we'll do that is if you are interested in uh, possibly winning this deck. Be 18 and over, must be subscribed. Um, and giveaways not affiliated with YouTube, it's just for fun. Um, I'll ship internationally. Uh, and let's see, let's use the word, just use the word queer somewhere in your comments down below. And uh, what will happen is the next time we have a, re a um, Sunday shenanigans live stream with Peggy, we will draw a winner for this deck and ship it out. So that is the plan for the Fifth Spirit Tarot. So leave a comment down below. Make sure your comment includes the word queer at some point if you want to enter. And then we will select a comment from among those that have been have that word in it using an automatic picker tool. But make sure that you comment down below and put that word in if you want to enter to win this. But in the meantime, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is a really, really fun, cool deck. This is a super fun deck. I know it's going to find a really great home and I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts on this. So leave any thoughts or opinions on this deck in the comments down below. If you've already got it or you've been playing with it, let us know what your experience has been with it like so, been with it so far, has been like with it so far. Leave that in the comments down below. Thank you all so, so much for watching and until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.